Hi, my name's Joanne and I'm an alcoholic and addict. It's a problem I've had for a very, very long time, but it went unrecognised for also a very long time. Um, you know, for a long time, I was able to deny my addiction problems because, you know, in my mind, I was still working. I was still contributing. I had a house, you know, I had the the pets. I, I was an auntie, I, you know, I was a partner, I was a sister and I was a daughter. But throughout that whole time, my life was split in two. You know, on the one hand, I was this responsible member of society with a high powered, well paid job. And on the other hand, I was, you know, every night I was drinking to blackout or I was taking some sort of drug or I was partying when I was younger. It all started to change um, when life happens, really. So life dealt me a couple of blows and you know I, I stopped working for a little while and when I stopped working the substance use really kicked in um, and very quickly I realized that I had a much much bigger problem than I would understood myself to have before so that was probably around a decade ago now and what that then happened from then was a course of detox centers uh, rehab then I'd have a period of sobriety for a little while and then I'd relapse and then, you know, eventually I'd go back into a, another treatment centre and again relapse later after sometimes a bit of um, sobriety or clean time and then I'd be back in another rehab centre. Till finally in um, 2020, um, as the lockdown started, um, I was actually travelling with my partner um, and our two dogs and we were we were living in a motorhome traveling through Europe and you know I guess I was not paying attention to my own problems again and I picked up um, alcohol and for a little while it was okay for a little while I could hide amongst the holiday makers um, you know I could come out at night and drink with people at night little did they know that during the day in the mornings I'd be drinking as well um, until finally it, you know it got worse and worse and worse until I was literally eyes open um, and I'd be drinking till when my eyes closed again and it became a very very small existence I was locked into a, a motorhome um, I couldn't uh, couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything except for get supplies. And um, you know, I was convinced, and I convinced my partner that if I didn't have alcohol, that I would fit and you know possibly die. So I was having to ask him to supply me to the point where I became so physically unwell that I lost the use of my legs. And apart from that, the, the, all the other awful things that go along with. Um, some horrific you know alcohol abuse you know not being able to personal hygiene there was no self-care at all you know n often not even being able to make it to the toilet on time and things like that i mean it's a really undignified existence and um it was as bad as it was ever going to get for me i think really so you know finally my family got together and you know kind of an intervention was decided that i would be brought back to England and, and taken to a rehab. And at that time, Steps Together was one of the only ones that was taking on people during the lockdown. Um, so that's where I had to go. Um, in my mind, you know, I wouldn't have minded if I'd never woken up again. I had lost everything. I was completely broken. I had no idea where to turn, what to do. Um, and I was literally just existing for the next drink. Um, so when I was finally taken to Steps Together, I was wheeled in in a wheelchair and it took nearly a week for me to actually recover physically enough to be able to um, start to uh, go to groups and to, to do, you know, to do the things that I needed to do in order to try and get better. And what I loved about Steps compared to other rehabs that I've been in was that I felt that I was given the time for some of that healing that it wasn't quite as you know they weren't so um paternal as i've experienced in the past i felt respected as an adult i was i felt that um staff who are all mad you know insanely qualified for what they do um were uh 
were there to really help and they actually really cared and it wasn't about um, being punitive which as I say I've experienced in other rehabs in the past so in that short you know what I also went into steps with was you know as I say the knowledge that I, I didn't know anything I, even with all the experiences I've had in different treatment centres and different ways of trying to combat my addictions um, I really felt like I knew nothing um, and I do believe to this day that that was kind of where I had to get to in order to be able to listen to what people were trying to help me with to try and um, you know make the suggestions that they were making that I needed to do and it was actually one of the therapists um, on the first day that I was in there said you know I said I'm the hopeless case you're not gonna you're not gonna get me you're not gonna help me because people have tried so many people have tried and I'm beyond help I know I'm beyond help um, no one can help me and she said to me I guarantee if you do what we ask you to do you will get better and for some reason I heard her and I heard that sentence and I and I reflected on it and I thought well you know what what else can I do there is no other option and there was a relief in that there was a way of saying right okay it's not up to me anymore I don't have to make these decisions anymore I can just do as I'm told and that's not something that I would do normally I'm you know always considering myself to be quite fiercely independent and a strong woman and all those things um, so being sort of told what to do literally from the minute I woke up to the minute I went to bed, it, essentially the structure is such that, you know, you are kept busy, um, then, you know, there was a relief in it for me. And I happily did it. In fact, you know, as as time went on, I mean, with, with Steps Together, they, they work with the 12 Steps of Recovery program. Um, and they give you a really good foundation in what those steps are. But the three important things that go in into any kind of recovery program of a 12 steps nature is there's three things that you need to be, which is open minded, willing and honest. None of which I am very good at, none of which is my default setting. You know, I'm renowned for my closed mindedness in some aspects, um, certainly when it came to myself and my addictions. Um, willingness was there was there because of the kindness i was shown and the honesty took practice because the life of an addict is full of such deceit continuous deceit um whether you're lying to your loved ones you're lying to strangers and you most of all you're lying to yourself such a lot so so learning how to open up and be honest um and open-minded were fundamentally key in in me being able to, uh, you know, take on board what I need to take on board. So that's kind of the, the, the best aspect of what I learned there. I mean, there are the technicalities of the steps and, and you do some paperwork around that, which is, you know, for some people it's difficult. I find it, I, I don't mind doing paperwork, so I was okay with that. But those three things, the open-mindedness, willingness and honesty, were really the things that I was able to hold on to and take out with me when I left. So, um, you know, the other good thing I found about steps was that they weren't just around the 12 steps. There were the, um, we had the um, acceptance commitment therapy, there was smart therapy, you know, so, which, is a, which is another type of recovery tool that, that can be used. And I found that the combination of the three things actually really helped me. So when I left, I was very keen to make sure I continued because it is a beginning. It's not, it's not a cure in its total. It's the beginning of a journey that is a lifelong one. And you have to accept that. You have to accept that this is something that you have to tackle um, throughout for the rest of your life. Now I say that and it sounds scary, but actually um, it gets better and better as time goes on. I'm 14 months um, clean and sober today. And in that time, I've continued to do my steps. I've, um, you know, I'm part of a fellowship. Uh, I still have contact with Steps Together Rehab. I go to their aftercare meetings on a Saturday. Um, so I feel like I'm giving back a little bit what was given to me when I was in there. And 
but then outside of that my own recovery is based around the fellowship um that i that i work with i do um i help people within that fellowship as well i'm you know we have sponsors and sponsees i have both i'm a sp sponsor and i also have um i'm also a sponsee and um there are things that we do like for example this year we're hoping to get into uh music festivals and provide a space for people that are having problems with drug and alcohol that they want to talk to us about how we've got over our addictions or or, or we continue to on a daily basis combat our addictions um and we're putting on a convention in september so that people like me can all come together now the beauty of it is is that although we are all so different in our stories you know and one of the things that if we're not careful keeps us away from recovery is that we look at those differences all the time you know i look at the drunk who sits on a park bench with a brown paper bag or the opiate addict who's sticking needles in their arms two of those things i've never done but i did drink from morning till night and i have taken prescription opiates over you know over the counter opiates in vast amounts as as much as any heroin or you know, heroin addicts has taken. So in in essence, whilst we might have done things differently um, and we had access to things differently, the bottom line is the one thing that keeps us all together is that at some point in our addiction, in active addiction, we became broken and we became desperate. Um, and we, be we became, we come to realize that it's not something we can do on our own. And that it's so important to be part of a group of people um, that will that understand. Because nobody else kind of understands an addict like an addict does. And so you, you don't have so much explaining to do. And, you know, as much as your family can love you and accept you if you're lucky enough. And I have been lucky enough to keep my family. And be able to look them in the eye now and give them peace of mind is the biggest blessing that I've had from my recovery. But being able also to be around people that know what it's like, um, you know, and that, that some days are still a struggle, that some days I will want to wake up and change the way I feel. Um, but as time goes on and as I practice more um, and as I do a few very simple things on a daily basis, I know that each night when I put my head on the pillow that. There is no day that's been as bad as those days right in my final stages of my addiction before I went into Steps. So um, I'd say thank you to Steps. Like I said, I think it's a brilliant rehab. Um, you don't want to do what I've done and had to compare as many as I had. I hope to goodness it's my last one I ever need to go to. Um, and yeah, so thank you Steps for everything you've done for me. And I know that you continue to do for others because I see it in aftercare all the time. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much.